I give all praise, glory, and honor to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, which in Hebrew are the wonderful names of the Creator, our Heavenly Father, I Am, which this world has named God, and His beloved anointed Son, which this world has named Jesus. I give honor, respect, and thanks to all the true, faithful, and sincere apostles, elders, prophets, and torchbearers of the nation of Israel, who have willingly endured and risked much to bring forth the truth. Thank you, brothers. In this chapter, we are continuing the conversation of Endure in Wisdom. Our brothers and sisters of the nation of Israel, the mighty nation of Israel being the so-called Negroes, the so-called Latins, Hispanics, and the so-called Native Americans, we all need to endure this last of our last captivity in wisdom. The brothers who speak this word in truth and in sincerity, the brothers, the modern day prophets, the ones who are out on the street at camp, the ones who are giving classes and the ones who are online speaking this word in truth and in sincerity, we speak because we believe. We believe in what our Father, Yahweh the Most High Power, the Creator of heaven and earth, the Creator of all things, the Creator and Destroyer, has said. The first scripture we're going to in this chapter is the second book of St. Timothy, chapter 3, verse 16. All scripture, everything written in this living word, this Bible, all scripture is given by the inspiration of the Most High Power and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. So this teaching is profitable, profitable for our souls, and it is inspired by our Father, the Most High Power. The book of Psalms, chapter 116, verse 10, I believed, this is our forefather, King David, I believed, therefore have I spoken. And this is how many of the nation of Israel feel today many of the brothers and sisters of the nation of Israel we believe we believe in the words of the Father we believe thus saith the Most High as it is written because all scripture is from the Father because all scripture is from the Spirit of the Father the second book of Corinthians, chapter 4, verse 13, we having the same spirit of faith, according as it is written, I believed, and therefore have I spoken. We also believe, and therefore speak. This is why the word is being amplified upon the earth today. We believe. We believe. And inside of this belief comes the spirit of the Father, discernment, wisdom, and prophecy. So there are brothers that have been out there speaking that the RFID chip would come, that that day would come, that that would be the mark. And in the spirit it was brought forth on this channel in chapter 376, which came out April 3rd of 2021, that that season had begun, the season of the mark, followed by chapter 381, which came out on May 8th. Both, both these videos, both these chapters were banned on this platform and had to be relocated and you can find the link to those videos in the description box below so it went from testing to jabs into your body 
to having to have a card to having to have a passport to today having to have an app you can clearly see where this is going when the brothers spoke about the RFID chip you can clearly see where we are headed all we do is speak thus saith the Most High as it is written the book of Acts chapter 5 verse 38 and now I say unto you refrain from these men men speaking the word of the Most High power men of the nation of Israel and let them alone for if this counsel or this work be of men it will come to naught so if the doctrine the teachings the wisdom and the truth of these men is of themselves it will come to nothing to nothing verse 29 but if it be of the most high power ye cannot overthrow it lest haply ye be found even to fight against the most high power when the father says something's going to occur it's going to occur when his servants speak thus saith the most high whether it be from this bible or from the spirit in truth and in sincerity but if it be of the most high power ye cannot overthrow it lest haply ye be found even to fight against the most high power a wise man would not walk out and speak something that the father has not given unto him the second book of Corinthians chapter 13 verse 8 for we can do nothing against the truth the truth are the words spoken by our father through the prophets through this book this living word through our master prophet Yahweh Shai for we can do nothing against the truth but for the truth we cannot stand in the way of it we cannot overthrow it all we can do is serve our father and what he has purposed the book of Sirach chapter 4 verse 25 Sirach is also called Ecclesiasticus and can be found in the Apocrypha, which is the middle book of the King James 1611 Bible. In no wise, in no way, speak against the truth, but be abashed of the error of thine ignorance. In no way speak against the truth, the words of the Father. Don't speak against the Father. But be abashed, be embarrassed, be disconcerted, discomforted, be ashamed of the error of thine ignorance. Remember, we have been taught by our enemies. And many of our brothers and sisters would rather hold on to a fairy tale than to hear the truth. Instead of being humble and saying, wow, I was mistaken. I was mistaken. Forgive me, Father, I was mistaken. In no wise speak against the truth. So through our master prophet Yahweh Shai, a time was spoken of when you would have to choose whether to take a mark in your forehead, fear, or the mark in your right hand what will eventually be a chip but what is today that jab because we are now in the season of this mark the serpent is the most subtle beast of the field working to say all the right things to deceive the whole world point case in fact there are people on this earth who went from this thank you to everybody who is out there helping us especially the healthcare workers themselves wow.
to this. Move now to the fight against the pandemic and more than 150 employees of Houston Methodist Hospital have either resigned or have been fired after refusing to get the COVID-19 vaccine. Earlier this month, the hospital system suspended 178 employees for two weeks without pay for not complying with regulations that they be vaccinated against the coronavirus. In response, 117 employees filed a lawsuit over the requirement, but it was later thrown out by a federal judge. Houston Methodist was one of the nation's first health systems to impose a vaccine mandate, but more have followed suit, including the majority of hospitals in Washington, uh, D.C., and Maryland. Elizabeth, 95 percent of doctors, based on the surveys I've seen, have taken uh, I mean, the vaccine health for some reason uh, a lot of health care workers don't and it's not just in this houston hospital i mean this is happening places. across america it's a lot of places and it's just there's a lot of reasons why they won't they feel it's my body you can't tell me what to do it's an emergency authorization vaccine so therefore it's they, they're worried that it was developed too quickly there's a lot of different reasons why why they're saying they don't want it new york hospitals are bracing for severe staff shortages Tens of thousands of healthcare workers have risked their jobs by refusing to be vaccinated. Officials had hoped medics would agree to get their jabs to avoid losing their livelihood. New York hospitals began firing or suspending healthcare workers for defying a state order to get the COVID-19 vaccine, one that went into effect on Monday. It's resulted in staff shortages and delayed services, with some 15% of the state's healthcare workers not fully vaccinated. New York Governor Kathy Hochul said she was considering deploying the National Guard and out-of-state medical workers to fill staffing shortages. I will be signing an executive order to give me the emergency powers necessary to address the shortages where they occur. That's going to allow me to deploy the National Guard who are medically trained, deploy people uh, who've been retired who may have had a license lapse, bring in people from elsewhere. That is not my first position though, my friends. My, my, my desire is to have the people who've been out there continue to work in their jobs, work in them safely, and to all the other healthcare workers who are vaccinated, they also deserve to know that the people they're working with will not get them sick. New York City Mayor Bill de Blasio told the news conference the city's hospitals were not yet seeing a major impact from the mandate, adding he worried about more about other areas of the state where vaccination rates are lower. A spokesperson for a smaller medical center in Buffalo said they've suspended elective inpatient surgeries and had stopped accepting intensive care patients from other hospitals as it prepares to fire hundreds of unvaccinated employees. The inoculation push comes as a federal appeals court on Monday ordered that New York City can require all teachers and staff to get the vaccine, reversing a previous decision that had put the mandate on hold for educators. You are essential. You are our heroes. You are the glue that keeps us all together. We are all in this together. We couldn't do it without you. Thank you. They went from that to being thrown out like trash. As it is written, thus saith, the Most High. The book of the prophet Haggai, chapter 2, verse 22. And I, Yahweh the Most High Power, will overthrow the throne of kingdoms, and I will destroy the strength of the kingdoms of the heathen, the other nations. And I will overthrow the chariots and those that ride in them, and the horses and their riders shall come down, every one by the sword of his brother. Here you are. You spent good money for your training and your education, probably still paying off your student loan, doing good work, riding high. 
and those of your own kingdom, this last wicked kingdom, they brought you down with the sword. They cut you down from your high place. They discarded you, your own brethren, your own governments, discarding you. As it is written, thus saith the Most High. The second book of the prophet Esdras, chapter 15, verse 14. Woe to the world, destruction to the world. Remember, world means time frame, age, span of time. The time frame of this last wicked kingdom, ruled by the devil, which are the rulers of this last wicked kingdom filled with the spirit of Satan. Woe to the world and them that dwell therein. For the sword and their destruction draweth nigh. And one people shall stand up and fight against another and swords in their hands. So we must go back to the beginning of this year and remember in Mystery Babylon, the so-called United States of America, what happened at their Capitol building. Nothing like that has ever happened before political parties really against one another now families against one another now because of politics and policies verse 16 for there shall be sedition among men and invading one another they shall not regard their kings nor princes and the course of their actions shall stand in their power there is division real division there is a man who can afford to go to space while many people are losing their homes. Sedition, division, and they will not regard their great ones. People being disregarded. People being unceremoniously discarded. Thrown away. Cut down. You're one of these doctors. You've got insurance to pay. You've got your home. You've got bills. And now they've just said, you cannot buy or sell. Sorry. Sorry. It's not like they're going to be able to go to another facility. At least not anytime soon. For many, this will, for many, this is destruction. Destruction. And although no one knows the time, no one knows the hour, and no one is saying that it's going to happen this year or next year, maybe it doesn't happen for three years, but we can see that it is happening. The return of our King of Kings is occurring. As it is written, thus saith the Most High. The book of St. Mark, chapter 3, verse 23. And he, Yahushai, called them unto him and said unto them in parables, How can Satan cast out Satan? And if a kingdom be divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And if a house be divided against itself, that house cannot stand. And if Satan rise up against himself and be divided, he cannot stand, but hath an end. Well, we are really watching that division, that house divided we are watching kingdoms be divided and Yahweh Shai speaking with the spirit of the father in him said and if Satan rise up against himself and be divided he cannot stand but hath an end this last wicked kingdom must come to an end so that our kingdom, the eternal kingdom of the nation of Israel may rise. And we are watching this occurring. 
from the ground up. Although this truth is hard for many of our brothers and sisters to hear, it is the Father's answer to many of your prayers. One of the most powerful things we can do today is to pray for wisdom. Really pray for wisdom. And brothers and sisters of the nation of Israel are praying to know the truth. This is why the voice of the Father is being amplified upon this earth through the brothers who come out and speak this word in truth and in sincerity. The book of Psalms, chapter 71, verse 1. This again is our forefather, King David. In thee, O Yahweh, do I put my trust. Let me never be put to confusion. So hearing this truth is the Father's answer to the prayers of many of our brothers and sisters who are finding their way home. To not have confusion to no longer believe in fairy tales and to no longer believe that this truth is a fairy tale because that is what the enemy has you to believe. They have many of our brothers and sisters thinking that the lie, the fairy tale is the truth and that the truth is a lie and a fairy tale. Verse 2, deliver me in thy righteousness and cause me to escape. Incline thine ear unto me and save me. Escape vanity. Escape foolishness. Escape death. Escape destruction. Escape the pit. Escape the traps of this last wicked kingdom. Escape the agony of the second death of fire. Incline thine ear unto me and save me. Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai is the only one who can save us. And it happens through this truth. We must hear and receive the Spirit of the Father through the Son and through those who speak in truth and in sincerity. The nation of Israel has enemies, and we are not to be confused about that. Because if you look at what the devil is saying, the devil is saying Israel is not taking this thing. The Israelites aren't taking it. Out of all the nations upon the earth, they've singled out Israel. Why do you think that is? because they have a perpetual hatred towards us and they want desperately for the one-third to turn against our Father. And to endure in wisdom is to understand that if the devil is willing to do these sort of things, throwing people out like trash, if they are willing to do it unto their own, what do you think they have in store for us? Now, of course, for the one third of the nation of Israel, the men, women and children, the true believers, the remnant who are turned unto the father in truth and in sincerity, he's going to shatter these devices. He's going to confound the wicked imaginations of the heathen, of the enemies. Their way will not prosper against those that are turned unto the Father in truth and in sincerity. But there is no more time to be on the fence. You must pray for wisdom to be able to hear the truth and accept the truth. The book of Psalms, chapter 35, verse 19. Let not them that are mine enemies wrongfully rejoice over me, neither let them wink with the eye that hate me without a cause so they believe in their heart of hearts even at this late hour that they're going to destroy the nation of Israel the father's children they may have their way with many of the two-thirds as part of their judgment they think they're going to sing over our dead bodies as they wink at us hey everything's great 
Ah, trust me, everything's great. Everything's great. It's safe. It's effective. Everything is great. Verse 24, they speak not peace, but they devise deceitful matters. They devise deceitful matters. They're attacking each other now. You think they're going to have any regard for us, the nation of Israel? For they speak not peace, but they devise deceitful matters against them that are quiet in the land. Everyone's got to take this thing. Why well, don't want to take it? Everybody's got to take it. Everybody's got to take it. Everybody's got to take it. People are just minding their own business. Many of our brothers and sisters, through wisdom, have teas and herbs. They're eating healthy diets. They're doing their best to take care of themselves as these plagues roll through the earth. But that's not good enough for the devil. Now, again, to deal with confusion, many are of the belief that they should always trust their doctor. They should always trust what a doctor says unto them. So. Did the Father grant unto certain of us, the nation of Israel, the wisdom to heal? The book of Sirach, chapter 38, verse 1. Honor a physician with the honor due unto him for the uses which ye may have of him, for Yahweh hath created him. So yes, we of the nation of Israel have physicians. Those that the Father has created here on earth to guide us around caring for our flesh. Verse 2, for of the Most High cometh healing. That's where the healing truly comes from. That's where the healing truly comes from. For of the Most High cometh healing and he shall receive honor of the king. Verse 3, the skill of the physician shall lift up his head. And in the sight of great men, he shall be in admiration. Yahweh hath created medicines out of the earth, and he that is wise will not abhor them. So the Father's spirit, so the Father has granted unto these physicians the spirit of wisdom, has granted unto these physicians the wisdom in dealing with the earth, the chemistry of the earth and what we can take, when to take it. But again, of the earth, natural things, natural things. And we should not hate them. We should not hate these things of the earth that the Father has created because he's created all things. And he knows what we need. It's kind of like when you watch a dog eat grass. They're like, yeah, I need some of this right now. Verse 5, was not the water made sweet with wood, that the virtue thereof might be known? So the Father could heal bitter waters. This is when Moses brought us out into the wilderness. We were three days out. We were in Marah, and the water was bitter there. So Moses called unto the Father. The Father said, hey, there's a tree over there. Cut the tree down. So they cut the tree down and put it in. The properties of that tree turned the water from bitter to sweet. So there are physicians who can guide us. But when you come down to this level of what the devil is trying to do, none of this is from the earth. None of this is natural. And none of it is meant to heal. But on top of it, they're trying to stand against the truth of the most high power who said there would be plagues. So... The question now becomes, who do you trust? And the physicians that are speaking to you, first and foremost, are they of the nation of Israel? Are they in the truth? Do they even believe in the Most High and His Son? Do they care about you? Or do they care about their belly? Making money, satisfying the lusts of their flesh. If we know that healing comes from the Father... Where is the first place we should go?
Returning to the book of Sirach, chapter 38, now verse 6. And he hath given men skill that he might be honored in his marvelous works. So the Father has given skill unto men that the Father can be honored in his works. With such doth he heal men and taketh away their pains. Verse 8. Of such doth the apothecary make a confection, and of his works, the works of the Most High Power, there is no end. And from him, the Most High Power, is peace over all the earth. So, man is giving something out for free. Is there peace all over the earth with this thing? Is it a natural confection that they have? Verse 9, My son, in thy sickness be not negligent, but pray unto Yahweh and he will make thee whole. Now again, this is not to say throw all of your medicines out, but around this particular thing, don't choose the mark, choose the Father. Pray unto him for health, well-being, and protection. What's an example of that? The book of Psalms, chapter 143, verse 6. I stretch forth my hands unto thee. My soul thirsteth after thee as a thirsty land, Selah. Hear me speedily, O Yahweh. My spirit faileth. Hide not thy face from me, lest I be like unto them that go down into the pit. Hear my prayer, Father. My spirit faileth. Everything around me says this. What, what should I do, Father? What should I do? I'm waiting on you. Hide not thy face from me, lest I be like unto them that go down into the pit, like all those who follow man and idols and the policies and the politics and the doctrines and the cultures and the morals of this last wicked kingdom. Cause me to hear thy loving kindness in the morning, for in thee do I trust Cause me to know the way wherein I should walk, for I lift up my soul unto thee. What should I do, Father? This is for those who are on the fence about this thing. The pull of this world is very powerful. The pull of this time frame, this age, this span of time is very powerful. And we must pray for wisdom. Verse 9, Deliver me, O Yahweh, from mine enemies. I flee unto thee to hide me. Teach me to do thy will, for thou art my most high power. Thy spirit is good. Lead me into the land of uprightness. Lead me out of here, Father. Lead me away from the devil. Lead me away from deceit. Lead me away from lies and vanity. Lead me away from judgment and the pit and the second death of fire. Well, the Father has said, through Yahweh, I don't take this mark. Don't take it. The Father said, through Yahweh, I don't take the mark. And we are in the season of the mark. One thing leads to another thing, leads to another thing, leads to another thing. We have to choose. And if we have wisdom, we can endure inside of wisdom because we know the Father's going to do what he says he's going to do. The last scripture we're going to in this chapter is the book of the prophet Jeremiah, chapter 17, verse 7. Blessed is the man that trusteth in Yahweh and whose hope Yahweh is. Those whose kingdom is of this world this time frame, this age, this span of time, they don't even care about each other. How much less do they really care about us? But our Father cares. He loves us. And He has given us the Comforter, the Holy Spirit, and He's also given us wisdom if we reach out to the Father. And that wisdom says, trust the Father over man. Trust his power 
over the power of this last wicked kingdom. Endure as good soldiers unto the end. And as always, strap in and hold on. Make no mistake about it. World War III and the nuclear destruction of America are coming. It will coincide exactly with the return of our King of Kings, Lord of Lords, Savior, High Priest and Brother, Yahawashai. Thus saith Yahweh. Philippians 2, 9-11 Wherefore Yahweh also hath highly exalted him, and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Yahawashai every knee shall bow, of things in heaven, and things in earth, and things under the earth. And that every tongue should confess that Yahweh Shai is Lord to the glory of Yahweh the Father. As it is written, thus saith Yahweh, and nothing can stop it. This is a final warning, Israel. Shake off this world, remember who you are, and come home. All praise, glory, and honor to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai.